Welcome back to another edition of Vikings Film Room, brought to you by the Vikings Entertainment Network. I'm your host, Pete Versich. Now, whenever I get out among the Viking fans, there's one topic that always comes up, and that topic is Kirk Cousins. Now, some of that's because you're a quarterback in the NFL, but how good is Kirk? Can he take us to the promised land? Do we have to build around him? Do we have to draft on defense? Forget about the offense. They're good enough. These are all unbelievably important questions. And there's a lot of guys who get paid a lot more money than you and I to figure these out. But in situations like this, I always love to go to the film. Why? Because the film doesn't lie. It tells us just what Kirk Cousins is capable of, what he brings to this offense, and what potentially he could bring to us in the future. Do you keep him? Do you pay him? Do you extend him? Do you get rid of him? These are all questions that only the eye in the sky can answer. So let's take a look at the film and see exactly what Kirk Cousins did in the 2022 season. Now, to be a great quarterback in the NFL, sometimes you have to win with your legs. And because of Kirk's wantonness to stay in the pocket, the Vikings face more defensive coverages and defensive fronts and stunts that more mobile quarterbacks not, may not ever see. But in this case against the Cardinals, this right here, the longest scramble of his career. But why? Well, if you take a look at the Cardinals, they're showing a two deep middle open type safety situation. But on the snap of the football, you're going to see one safety that drops down. Now, why is he dropping down? He's dropping down to help on Justin Jefferson coming across the field. You'll see they switch that and pick that up. And then when Cousins starts to scramble, you see Jefferson make a little move toward the middle of the field and the DBs has to make a decision. Do I cover the quarterback? Do I get Jefferson? He runs with Jefferson and just opens everything up. Cousins sees a wide open field because they are in lurk, because they are in man-to-man. -man, and he sees a lot of green, pulls that ball down, chugs his way, and it's 17 yards to the good. So he doesn't scramble a lot, but when he does, he can be effective. Now, we saw Cousins win with his legs, but it's the ability to make decisions pre-snap that are so important. And against the Detroit Lions, you're going to see this exactly. As Cousins gets to the line of scrimmage, you can see him walking around, directing traffic, shifting the protection, bringing in the receivers, and we get a high-low route to the bottom of your screen. You're going to see this between Jefferson and KJ Osborne. You get the out, and then Cousins running the deep, and then Jefferson, excuse me, running the deep seven. And I think part of the reason why. Cousins is able to thread the needle on this throw is because he got exactly what he saw. He checked to this, he bought into it, and he was going to hit Jefferson on that deep seven route. So great job of pre-snap diagnosis, check into a winning play, and then execute. Now, sometimes as a quarterback, you've got to win after the snap. Maybe you're not too sure what you're getting, but you're able to make adjustments on the fly. And this play against Indy, I think, just exemplifies that perfectly because the Vikings are in empty. They have three receivers to Cousins left and two to his right. Cousins knows he has some type of middle open defense. And when you're spread out like that, you attack the middle of a defense. So if you watch KJ Osborne after the snap, as he gets to about the 45 yard line, you see him put that hand in the air, right? He says, hey, I'm open deep. He saw that the middle of the field was open and then Cousins, because of the great protection, was able to get that football right down the middle of the field turns around and this ends up being really the play that got us going forward against the Indianapolis Colts. So a great job post snap of making a read and making a big play. All right, another example of Cousins making a great post snap type of read. Gets up to the line of scrimmage again, seeing a middle open style of defense. Now watch Justin Jefferson down at the bottom of your screen. He's in the slot. He works himself inside around the linebacker and right when he gets to about the 45 yard line, he sees the safety on top of him is too deep and that the safety on the opposite side of the field is turned toward him. Cousins buys time, steps up, but he doesn't see Jefferson open. He sees this open area between the hash mark and the sideline behind the safety. And he really throws Justin Jefferson open. So he's throwing this ball to a spot saying, JJ, go get it. But again, a post-snap type of read, making things happen after he sees what's going on in front of him. Those are adjustments that you want your quarterback to be able to make. Now, this is a situation where you have two New York Giant defenders on Justin Jefferson. One on the inside to try to protect the middle of the field and then a safety over the top. Now, Cousins gets to the top of his drop. Jefferson breaks down. 
and he tries to bend this thing toward the middle of the field. Again, middle open, so the middle of the field is there. Cousins throws this football to a spot, right? He just, and you can see it from the end zone, sees that lane, throws that football exactly where JJ can catch it, and not only catch it, but fall forward and is able to score a touchdown. So that is one of my favorite plays of the entire year because the defense is in two man. They are trying to prevent this exact play. Couldn't stop it. Now, the next thing is arm strength and accuracy. And this play against Buffalo, I think, just shows you what you're dealing with Kirk Cousins. You're going to get a play action type of a pass here. That means Cousins is able to turn his back on the entire defense. And he gets to the top of his drop. And that's where you see Justin Jefferson do this D-line worthy swim move and makes his way to the sideline. Now, if you watch Cousins, this ball is thrown before J.J. even gets his head turned around. But this ball is thrown to a spot. It's thrown to exactly the 42-yard line right on the sidelines. He has the arm strength and the accuracy to get it there. So this is this is 35 yards as far as the sideline goes. It's going to be much longer than that. But the arm strength and accuracy of this throw, not a lot of guys can do this. To, to recognize it, throw it out there, and get it right exactly where J.J. can catch that thing going out of bounds. It's just an unbelievable throw. All right, play number seven. Now, before the ball snap, you can see where Buffalo and what they're trying to do. You see the corner lined up over Adam Thielen. Everybody's inside the numbers on the bottom of your screen. They're trying to crowd the middle of the field. And when defenses do that, you have to take advantage of the outside. And this is really the only way you can do it. Cousins, notice on the far hash mark, right? Thielen, as he gets off the line of scrimmage, is working his way up the field and then just doesn't really break down, but they run what they call a speed out and it becomes a sprint to the sideline. Cousins is almost at the 50 and he's already throwing this football way before Thielen's into his break. He's throwing it again to a spot. Thielen breaks up to it, makes the catch right at the sideline, and they're able to move the chains. These throws can't be made by just anybody. you got to have the accuracy and the arm strength, or else this is an interception. So his strength, his accuracy, you're able as an offensive coordinator to take advantage of what defenses are giving you, especially on the sidelines. Now, this is another one of my favorite plays of Cousins this year mainly because of how they set this up. And as Cousins takes the snap, notice Ole Udo, left tackle. He oversets and does a tremendous job of getting that defensive end to go where he's not supposed to, and that's underneath. Now you see JJ and KJ at the top of your screen. They're working a little bit of a combo route to eventually go and attack the sideline. And Cousins is moving to his left. When KJ makes that break at about the four yard line, he's stabbing in and he's gonna work to the pylon. And Cousins, who's moving away from his throwing arm, just before even KJ can look back, already that ball is in the air. It's headed right to that spot. So the timing, the accuracy, the arm strength gets it right there. And it's just a catch, tap, tap, right at the corner of the end zone. It's an unbelievable play. Arm strength, accuracy, and timing. All right, play number nine. And I think this play here piggybacks on the last play that we just saw because you'll see K.J. Osborne going in motion. This is deep in the red zone. But as soon as the ball is snapped, you'll see the DB that's trying to cover K.J. is still in the middle of the defense. He has no chance to get to the sideline, so it becomes a race. And K.J. is just running right to a spot. From the camera angle, you see this ball just float perfectly and it's perfectly on the spot. The DB has no chance of getting there. All KJ has to do is look back, stick those arms out, and able to catch that ball for a touchdown. So it's execution, right? The, the formation, the lineup, the motion, you see the defense, you know what you want, and you put that thing exactly where it needs to go. There's a lot involved on that simple pass. So in addition to the ability to move, read, throw, be accurate, the arm strength, you also have to have some touch. And against in this next play against Philadelphia, I think this is a perfect example of just the, the touch accuracy that you have to have. So Irv Smith, you'll see him on the bottom of the screen. He's gonna work his way across the field. And right, and up on top, you're gonna have an up route and then Thielen running a wheel. That's all designed to clear that zone out and let Irv Smith work in behind that linebacker. But it's this throw. He gets it just over the fingertips of the linebacker, but not so high as to give that safety in the deep middle time to get down and make a play just over the fingertips of the linebacker. 
that's a touch pass. And I think that's, that's one of his better throws all season. Now, this is another great example of a touch pass. You see Adam Thielen up top in the slot. He's going to work his way all the way across the field. And you have the shallow route in KJ Osborne. That's the, that's the chum route, right? That's the cheese route. And the linebacker in the slot or the nickel sees that, but doesn't quite get deep enough. And you'll see Thielen just work his way. He just work in this route a little bit deeper. And Cousins is able to get this ball right on the money. That's a beautiful touch pass on a long developing cross the field type of a route. And finally, you have to be able to thread the needle, right? And in this case against the Colts, you'll see a perfect example of that happening. And we talked about this in, in some of the other JJ films. It's just the routes that we are running to pick on and to beat cover two. So you see KJ Osborne working his way across the middle of the field. Then you'll see Hawkinson kind of work his way out. And just all he wants to do is attract the attention of the DB underneath. And when Cousins is throwing this football, you can see the triangle of defenders that are right there. You're going to see the, the linebacker, the corner, and the safety are all triangulating. But Cousins is able to get that football right in that spot. But he knows what coverage he's getting and where he has to go with this football. So overall, we're able to see what Kirk Cousins can do. He can beat a defense pre-snap just by identifying what they're going to be in and getting yourself in the right position. He can make adjustments after the snap, right? You see a coverage, you get K. Jasborn work in the middle of the field. He's able to do that. Every once in a while, he could pull that thing down and scramble, but it's not a strong suit. What does all this mean? I think it means he has, obviously, the arm strength, the accuracy, the intelligence, and the post-snap moxie to put this team in a position to win. The question is going to be, can we give him just a fraction of a second longer? And if we can do that, JJ will get to 2,000 yards and this team will continue to put up points the way that they have. It's not a huge quantum type of a leap on offense. Just keep Cousins, give him a second or two longer as, as often as you can, and you're going to see Cousins still be a very effective quarterback in the NFL.